Six months into the investigation of Tiali Palmer's murder, police still had no concrete leads. The Thorburn story was so unshakable, they were no longer suspects. There was no forensic evidence. Tiali's body was so badly decomposed that unless they're told, police will never know how she was murdered. As for motive, there was no clue as to why this young girl had to die. That was until Crime Stoppers got a tip off. An anonymous call came through and uh, gave us details that there was a Facebook message sent from Trent um, outlining a, a um, sexual activity with Tiali um, and that uh, there had been a family meeting the night before she disappeared. This is the Facebook message that changed everything and forced a crisis meeting of the Thorburns. In it, Rick Thorburn's youngest son, 18-year-old Trent, confesses. I'm in trouble and I don't know what to do. He's had sex with 12-year-old Tiali and fears she may be pregnant. Fears, too, the legal trouble he may be in. I've never had sex before and she made me do that with her. He goes on to tell his cousin. I just want the kid gone and out of my life but I know she's also a source of income for mum and dad as well. The cousin advises Trent to tell his parents, which he says he'll do. You look at the content of that um, Facebook message, you look at the, um, the fact there's a family meeting, um, and uh, just by coincidence, she goes missing the next day. Um, yes, it's, it's suspicious. So that Crime Stopper call was perhaps not a eureka moment, but the beginning of let's look at the Thorburns more closely, let's yes, crack was. this family. Yes, it was. It was crucial. The call to Crime Stoppers followed the explosive news that Rick Thorburn had been charged with the sexual abuse of two children under 12. Those charges, which are yet to be tested in court, do not relate to Tiali, but rather two other children who attended his wife's daycare centre. That centre was run out of the family home and was allowed to operate for a further six months after Tiali's murder. I think it's unbelievable. I think they should have been shut down straight away. They weren't charged at that point with anything. They still had a child in their care who went missing, who was murdered, you know? Regardless of whether it was or wasn't them, I think that they should have not been allowed to have any more children until the situation was sorted. The image of the perfect family was falling apart. The Thorburns were now the prime suspects and under constant police surveillance. We knew um, straight away that uh, they were putting stories together and um, that they had to stick together and that they were telling each other to stay strong. All under the roof of this house here. Yeah, it's, it's hard to believe. Detective Inspector Damien Hansen says while they were very aware of the increased police pressure, the Thorburns didn't know their house was also being bugged. Every lie now on the record. I hope you understand what that means. For the first time, what was said can be made public. Simply, the Thorburns' candid conversations are horrifying. In their own dispassionate words, we hear how they plan to cover up a child's murder. We will have to keep you out of this completely. Here, Rick and Jolene are schooling their sons to maintain the lie that Tiali was dropped at school when, in fact, she was already dead. We have to stick to the same story about her going to school the next day and whatever. Then this. Rick tells Trent what to say to police if he's ever questioned about his sexual abuse of his 12-year-old foster sister. She came into your room. You remember waking up? You were still drunk, you were still whatever. Never do the recordings capture sadness for Tia 
or remorse for what was done to her. But they do betray the first moment when two members of the family, Juline and eldest son Josh, begin to crack. If we have to come clean, that's just between you and I. We will have to come clean. We've got to come clean to protect you and me and Trent for the rest of it. Dad made the decision to go down that path, unfortunately, and we're going to have to live with it if it comes to that. Armed with these conversations and the damning Facebook message, police now had the evidence to prove the family was lying and leverage to get them to confess. We'd um, put the Thorburn family before coercive hearings and as a result of that Facebook message, we were able to prove that um, Julian, Trent and Josh had all lied at those hearings, committed perjury. Um, that was crucial in our, in our investigation because we had to get, get one of them, or, or more than one, uh, to, to become Crown witnesses against Rick. Who turned? Uh, Julian and Josh. I just knew that I couldn't keep doing this very much longer because it was going to catch up with me. Police have given us special access to their interviews with Julian and Josh. Interviews that expose the pair's cowardice and reveal what happened the night Tiali was killed. Said to Rick, um, was Tia okay? And he said, it's all taken care of. Said, what do you mean by that? He said, don't worry. Don't ask any questions. I've taken care of it. Three hours earlier, Thursday the 29th of October 2015, and Julene shares Trent's terrible secret with Rick. He'd had sex with Tiali the week before. He was adamant about him doing jail time, that he'll go to jail for something like this. Yeah. So Rick was, yeah, extremely yeah. concerned about that. Yeah. That he can't go to jail. Just can't let it happen. Julene then leaves. Tia is now in the house on her own with Rick. The last time that you saw, you saw Tia Power alive, when was that? In her bedroom, sitting yeah. on her bed. Okay. I said goodnight to her there. Yep. And um, yeah, expressed to her that you know, she needed to stay there and, and put, her, put herself to sleep when she was ready sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And where was Rick? I think he was outside the kitchen door, like waiting for me to come back outside. Was there anyone else in the house? Nobody else in the house, no. And then you left? Mm -hmm. We believe that at that stage Rick has killed her and he's put her body out here in the shed. Do you know how long Tiali was in Rick's presence that night? Uh, we, we, we know there's probably a period of about three hours that between she, her being dropped home here and Julene returning home and the, the boys returning home as well. With no sign of Tia? There was no sign and uh, Rick simply told them that uh, Tia was gone. Josh too breaks ranks with his father and chillingly recounts the moment he learned of Tia's death. His exact words were Tia is no longer with us. Um, and also he said, um, I hope you understand what that means. I knew what he meant, that he'd killed her. How was Dad's emotions at that time? He didn't cry. Um, he seemed... Um, he seemed quite assured and defensive of what he'd done. Mm -hmm. and why he had done it, obviously, it was to protect Trent. So, um, Rick didn't mention to you before you went, Sharon, that he might take this path? No. Absolutely not, no. no. OK. Because I'm just thinking about the fact that he said that, you know, you said that mm. he was a bit worried about what might happen to Trent. Yeah. So we've gone from that to killing yeah. him while you're out. Yeah. No, I would never have left the house if I thought that. I had no indication, no feeling that he would do something like that at all. But to Cindy, Julene's account just doesn't ring true. I believe that, you know, 
Jolene left Siali there to die that night if we believe the story that they're telling. That she left to go be at her sister's house after the conversation happened about Trent sleeping with Tiali. I believe she left her there to die. During that discussion at home, did you discuss with you the intricacies of how she was killed? No. I still don't know what happened there. I just know that he did. Mm -hmm. That he did do it. Um, and I think he said to us that it's best we don't know how it happened because the less we know, the less we can tell. The instructions for the family were that to carry on life as, as normal. What's your view of the fact that they did? Uh, it, it just shows how callous they are. It, it, they were calculating, they were callous. Um, they did not care one bit for Tia. Um, they were only interested in themselves and keeping that family unit together. I just think that, you know, if your son slept with an under underage girl, then there's so many other ways to deal with it. You don't go and kill someone for it, I don't think. You know, he could have turned him in. There had to be more going on than just what they're saying. Coming up, Rick's fake school run. He's said he stopped for 30, 40 seconds, he hasn't. And the family pact is finally broken. I see them as perpetrators. That's next on 60 Minutes.